Good morning, everyone. Thank you for starting the day out with me. I'm Jenna Stauffer. All right, Key West is the end of the road, literally for some, figuratively for others. This place is diverse and it is so accepting. It's especially accepting to those who might come broken from drugs, alcohol, family crisis, HIV, and AIDS. Now, my guest this morning, he knows just how accepting this place is. He is surviving and living well with AIDS. In fact, it has even made him stronger physically, mentally, and spiritually. I believe that hearing his story this morning and his outlook for his future will definitely leave an impression on you. Chris, thank you so much for being here today. Well, thanks for having me. Well, it's a pleasure having you here. And Chris, I understand that you are a Midwest boy at heart. Yes, absolutely. I was uh, born and raised in Columbus, Ohio, almost 50 years ago. Um, you know, raised in a, in a, a nice uh, middle class suburban household. Um, went to school, graduated from high school, went straight to uh, college right after that uh, in Washington, D.C. I moved to D.C. Um, I got a job with the federal government after that and traveled the world for uh, a number of years. Um, came back to the United States uh, to pursue a master's degree um, and then eventually came to Key West in 2004 to write for the Key West Citizen uh, and then eventually moved over to the health department where I am now. Um, but all that time, yeah, I was just just me. <laughs> and you were working, Chris, it sounds like. We were talking a little bit earlier and you were saying how in your 20s, mm -hmm. your life was just all about your work. You right. didn't really care too much about relationships and dating. You just wanted to focus on your work. But then once you hit 30, you kind of decided you wanted to have a little fun right, in your life. <laughs> right. Pandora's box opened up. Yeah. Uh, during my um, college years, I was involved with the public speaking team. So we were gone on the weekends and I was doing classes and taking tests. And, and then um, I went right into the government job and started doing tours overseas. So I was really focused on career and learning, education. My personal life I really hadn't explored. Um, I knew sexually um, there were questions there for me and for others. Um, but I really didn't explore that until I finished my last tour with the government and came back to the United States uh, where I felt uh, a little safer to explore um, what it was about myself that I wanted to learn. Um, so during my uh, master's degree, I was working on a master's degree in Washington, D.C. It was about a three-year period there. Um, that's where I started exploring sexuality. and. Um, I was um, relatively promiscuous through that period. Um, I was living in a big city. I had transportation. Um, uh, this new thing called the internet was up and you could meet people online. Um, I was living in a, in a neighborhood where I was within walking distance of, of thousands of people. Um, so here I was, Midwest boy in the big city, <laughs> with all this exposure to all this stuff and um, having fun. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, certainly, um, safety um, always came to mind. And certainly, there was a period where I uh, slipped up. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, Chris, were you safe when you were with others? I would say, oh, yeah, I was safe. Um, I would say I was safe, it went through my head to be safe, and I was safe most of the time, but um, you know, when I first was diagnosed with HIV and I shared it with my sister, she said, well, you know, it only takes once. Mm -hmm. So uh, in the few times that I was unsafe, obviously that's where this must have happened. And um, people ask me um, when it happened exactly, and I say, well, you know, I. I never really took the time to go back and sort of mull it over in my head because it, it, it's kind of, to me, it's, it's sort of pointless. Unless, unless I have a real point to going back in time and, and discovering that and finding out where that may have happened, um, I, I just didn't see the need to do that. Plus, I mean, I was, I, like I said, I was being promiscuous enough that, you know, it, I would have to have I would have had to have thought back a lot to mm -hmm. think where this might have happened. So, when I was diagnosed, it was a matter of moving forward, looking mm -hmm. forward to seeing what what I was going to do from that point forward. And let's talk about your reaction, Chris, when you found out. That's definitely 
it's a life-changing moment it, it must be mm -hmm. so what was your reaction was it dramatic mm. well it's it's funny I was thinking about this the other day um, you know a lot of people talk about how when when Kennedy was assassinated the world changed or when 9-11 happened the world changed um, this is certainly a, a piece of news that you get that that may not change your world uh, in that caliber that that way but it certainly does uh, mark a point in your life where you're moving forward differently than where um, you uh, the way you were moving um, I was fortunate in that I was going to get tested every six months which is a really good rule of thumb um, whether you're sexually active or, or, or not so sexually active it's always good to get tested every six months and um, uh, because I was responsible in that way, getting tested every six months, and that's where it was caught. I, I hear lots of stories about people who are diagnosed with HIV when they're in the hospital and they're, you know, on ventilators and they're, they've dropped down to 110 pounds. You know, they, they want to deny the existence of the disease. They want to deny their sexuality. They want to deny how safe or unsafe they were. But, you know, there they are. Their life is on the line and they get the news then. I, I didn't want that to happen for me. If I was going to be out there and promiscuous and I was going to be doing this, I needed to make sure I was getting tested every six months, not just for my own knowledge, but for the knowledge of the people that I was engaging in, in sexual relations with. Mm -hmm. Very, very important. So my, my initial reaction was um, uh, um, accepting. It was, it was okay. Um, it was a possibility, not a probability, but okay, it happened. Um, I took a lot of solace in the fact that we've been, we were at that point, this was 2002, we were 20 years into this. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of medications and social service agencies and counseling and protection and, and so forth that I could rely on that helped um, ease the blow for me. Mm -hmm. um, but I did have a, a moment um, where, again, you have that realization that your life is going to be different moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, I just had a moment, and this is just the way I am with any, any, any <laughs> kind of uh, big news like this or a d death of a pet or a loved one, is I'll have a, a short moment where I'm crying and I'm having a little bit of a, of a, of a, a, a hissy fit of, of some <laughs> kind, but then I, I uh, collect myself and then I get right down to the business of what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. um, what social services do I need? Um, what kind of testing do I have to start engaging in? Where do I apply for assistance if I need that assistance? How do I share this with my family and my friends? Uh, how do I proceed in the world um, as a sexual being now that I have this virus um, that can be um, passed on to others? Mm -hmm. And Chris, you were in an accepting place. Now, you eventually moved back to Key West and everything and, mm -hmm. and I know that you were welcomed with open arms here and oh, you, yeah. you weren't alone with it yeah. so that had to be comforting too and and eventually Chris it did turn into AIDS for mm -hmm. you but you're living well you're healthy mm -hmm. and you look happy yeah I, I mean I have to say um, I I've always been very open about it, you know, writing for the newspaper, being a, a, a public person, I always felt it was important to be upfront with my employers about it. And I've been very, very fortunate in that the employers that I've had um, have been very accepting of that. Mm -hmm. And I felt, as you say, very welcome. And opportunities, were, I was not uh, denied opportunities anywhere along the way. Um, and so I, I feel very fortunate being here in the Keys, and, and, and I applaud, you know, the, the people I work for. They've been very supportive, and, and my family and friends here um, have been very supportive. So I'm, I'm very lucky. I'm yeah. very lucky in yeah, that regard. definitely are. Now, Chris, we're running out of time, but what would be your message to our viewers this morning? Mm. I would say uh, make sure you get tested. Um, like I said, for me, it was just me being conscientious about getting tested every six months. That's how we caught it. Don't get tested when it's next to being too late. And make sure you get tested again, not just for your own knowledge, but, but for your own knowledge going forward with your partners. Make sure you share that information. I know a lot of people don't want to share that information because it's going to make people shy away or walk away. But you know what? It's better to have that happen than risk you passing on a life-threatening illness to somebody else. Mm -hmm.
better that they know. Absolutely. Well, thank you again, Chris, for being on with me this morning. It's been fun talking with you. Thanks. <laughs> I'm going to take a quick break right now. I'll be right back after these messages. Much more to come. Stay with me.